I'm Dave Fornell, getting down to brass tacks and hard facts, the history of flog tech. The history of modern firefighting really started during the Second World War. Uh, one of the things that came out of the war was the use of fog. Now, this nozzle was developed for the Navy, and it was developed for shipboard firefighting. It had a spray stream impinging jet. In other words, little streams of water would, would bing on each other here to make a fog. Float about 50 gallons a minute here, float about 50 gallons a minute out of the straight stream. It had a strainer in here, so when you went halfway, you got the fog stream. When you went completely, uh, it would actually blow the debris out of the strainer, and it came out the straight stream port. But uh, the important thing to understand, this was never designed for structural firefighting. It was used after the war, but this, is, this was designed for shipboard firefighting. Now, in 1950, the fire chief of Parkersburg, West Virginia, Lloyd Lehman, gave a talk at the fire department instructors conference, and he, his talk was little drops of water. And what he said was during the war, he was the commandant of the Coast Guard Firefighting School, and they did a lot of experiments. So they had an old derelict transport ship, and they uh, uh, would set a fire in the engine room, and um, they would go ahead and drop a, a fog applicator down in there, and they would have thermocouples, and they would watch, and uh, as that water flowed, it would create steam, and the, the temperature would come down, okay? And sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes, but finally it got to a point where they could enter that compartment. So after the war, when he went back to the fire department, he decided that he was going to go ahead and experiment with what he called particles of water, a, a cone of particles of water. He didn't call it fog at the beginning. And uh, the nozzle that he used uh, was an industrial nozzle, and this thing flows 55 gallons a minute at 100 pounds nozzle pressure. And then he put a shut off, off the smoothbore nozzle down here. But that's what he started this fog firefighting with. He published a book in 1954, and he had a number of case histories in here. Now, understand the Parkersburg Fire Department, they were dealing with limited manpower, and don't forget, in those days, they didn't have SCBAs like we have now. The coats were rubber without liners in them. They didn't have the protective equipment. So what he was saying, it was okay to take out a pane of glass as long as the fire was confined. Take out a pane of glass, go ahead and put this cone of water particles in there. You want to get it into the hottest part of that fire, up in the, up in the overhead. It'll start creating steam. It'll start cooling things down. It will spread throughout the building and knock the fire down. Did it work? Yes, but a couple of things. He said in his book, don't be in the building when you do that or you're going to get burned, okay? The second thing he said was that you've got to give it some time. He took the shipboard tactics, you know, which, again, it's steel. You can keep it closed up for 40 minutes um, and adapted it. So right after that, there was a, a committee formed, and it was a, a committee for the application of water. Now, they traveled around the country. Mostly insurance people were there because the insurance companies kind of dictated fire training in the, in, in the 50s in this country. And um, what they thought is that if you get a fog nozzle and you apply it like Lehman says, you're going to reduce our losses. As it moved on into the 60s, the, they forgot what Lehman said about getting burned if you were in a building. So if you go in the building or if the building is wide open and you put the fog in the overhead, the cone of water particles, you're going to create a bunch of steam. That's what Lehman said, create a bunch of steam. But now you're in a building. A cubic foot of steam demands a cubic foot of space. So in that overhead, that, that steam is expanding, and it's pushing all the smoke and all the heat down on the firefighters. Even into the 60s and early 70s, there were so many instructors that were teaching, do a fog, protect yourself with a fog. But two members of that committee, Keith Royer and Bill Nelson, they were from Iowa State University. Well, they went back to the university and said, you know, is it really the nozzle that puts out the fire, the form of the water, or is there something else? And they did research. They burned buildings down but they brought in the chemistry department, the physics department, and what they found out was that the rate of water application was actually what put the fire out. So consequently, they came around and they said, hey, uh, you know, folks, uh, it, it, it's, you really need to figure how much water you're putting on a fire. So finally, people are starting to say, let's go ahead and do straight streams. A lot of different theories, but a firefighter nowadays needs to know all the theories, but the most important thing is to apply the water in enough volume to knock the fire down safely.